is Truth Seeker here. I want to talk a little bit about the December 3rd court hearing between Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department and the Review Journal. Um, I think we need everyone in the community to start a letter writing campaign and we need to do it as soon as possible um, about the missing body cam and 911 calls. Um, I posted a video of December 3rd. If you haven't seen it, it was the court hearing. Um, I've got the link in the description of this video to get there. I'm going to go through a few things here um, about the court case. Today, Travis Allen Session, we have Chief Justice Gibbons presiding. Good morning, Chief Justice Gibbons. These are the judges that were for the Supreme Court for the case the other day. I've got their addresses and their names for you. If you would like to write letters to them, it would be very helpful. They're presently in recess making a decision. Um, the court case right now, they're fighting about money, but it was very apparent watching the hearing that these judges do not have a clue that we have not been given everything. Metro was saying that we have gotten it, and the Review Journal thinks we've gotten it too. So anyways, they have two offices, one in Carson City and one in Las Vegas. If you could write a letter to each judge at each address, that would be great. Uh, our uh, first case this morning is case number 75518, Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department versus Las Vegas Review Journal. We have Ms. Uh, Nichols representing the appellant, Ms. McClatchy. Uh, and Mr. Topka representing the respondents. Uh, would uh, Ms. Nichols, would you like to reserve any time in the bottle? Mm -hmm. Yes, Your Honor. Five minutes, please. Uh, you may do so. Okay, you may proceed. Mm -hmm. Good morning and thank you. Jackie Nichols on behalf of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. May it please the court. This case pertains to the one October incident and the various public records requests from the media in relation to that incident to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. And this is the address of the attorney for Metro, her law office. I think it would be helpful if letters were sent to them. Disclosure order, which is the, that first order, um, it identifies what information can be redacted, and it's personal identifying information, and that includes the identity of the individual and um, related information such as telephone numbers, um, addresses, and things of that nature. So if you're on body cam footage, what would happen, um, as described in Lieutenant Moon's is a declaration, is that you would have to have a redaction of of the audio uh, of the of, I'm sorry of the video of the face of the individual. It would be blurred out, so it's not like a black screen. It, it's a blur, and then you would have the audio redaction of the person saying their first name, saying the address, and so it's not a, a complete blanket redaction. And so the argument that they aren't able to tell what is being redacted, um, I, I don't think it, it's a it's a fair characterization. These are the clear cut redaction rules that were in the court order originally before it went to the Supreme Court. When you're talking about the redactions she made, were the redactions done by blurring or were they done by cuts in the, uh, in the body cam footage? Uh, in the body cam footage, it was blurring of individuals. So the actual video was blurring. And then when it came to audio, it would be like a blank. So if an individual is speaking, saying my name is, then you would have a blank. And then the uh, just for the purposes of the name of the individual or whatever personal identifying information that is being spoken, um, and then the audio would continue. So the videos have not been cut in any way. They Absolutely are, they're not. They're blurring, but no cuts. The audio is has been removed then through uh, uh, through that process. Then, That's right? correct. Okay. Thank you very much. This is not true at all. We watch the body cams. If you look at the timestamps up in the upper right hand corners, there's multiple times where you can see the time jump. They splice these videos. They're acting like they didn't. The attorney might not be aware of it, 
but they were definitely spliced, and the judge should know that what she's saying about the redactions is not true at all. And, and I quoted in my brief, I believe in my reply brief on page 11, that she attests, the undersigned attests, that there's still ongoing disputes over the Public Records Act in be, between her client, the Review Journal, and Metro, and that... Uh, over body cam coverage or other issues? Uh, well, the, the way that the response reads is over <coughs> Public Records Act generally. As far as the, the body cam footage specifically, um, I do believe that the exception applies. May it please the court, Maggie McCletchie for the Las Vegas Review Journal. Nobody questions law enforcement's important role in responding to 1 October. But the public and the media have a right to evaluate what occurred, including law enforcement's response. From ignoring the Review Journal's initial requests to engaging what the district court has found as gamesmanship after the disclosure order was entered, Metro has actually evidenced, un unfortunately, an outright hostility towards the media's efforts to get access to records to help answer the public's questions about 1 October. That hostility, in my view, is in no small part reflected in their effort to get costs only from petitioners when they didn't even, other than an initial small batch of records, they didn't even directly produce records to us. This is the address of the attorney for the Review Journal. If you would like to write a letter to her and let her know that we don't have all the body cam and 911 calls, this is the attorney that was in court that day representing the other media respondents and his address. Um, they also mooted their appeal when they ignored the district court's disclosure order to meet and confer with us in good faith, with the utmost good faith concerning production issues. Instead, Metro took the position that the scope of the request could never be narrowed, that they couldn't work with us to figure out a reasonable and meaningful way to produce these records, when in fact we of course could have jointly worked to amend the order. Uh, but they, they refused to work with us, instead taking the position they didn't have to follow the orders, they didn't have to produce the records to us, and they instead engaged in their cattle call mass production, which by the way, they never communicated uh, with us directly about. My client happened to get a mass email about. Ms. Um, McClutchy, so did they ever provide to you your requested footage directly to you? Like, here's your request, here's your response. The initial batch of records, mm -hmm. we were told, would be available for us for pickup for no cost at Metro's headquarters. We went and got those. And other than that, no communication to us was made about those records. And the, whatever they did disclose generally to the media of the body cam footage, is there still a remaining dispute? In other words, more footage, more documents that you haven't received, that you're still trying to receive. And I guess related to that, um, with regard to their redactions, whether you um, asked for a privilege log. There's a lot of body cam missing. Go ahead, I just wanted to clarify then, there's still at issue some some video that hasn't been provided, I guess, because of redactions that you're trying to get, or at least get a privilege log. The video has been, it's my understanding, although they've refused to give us a certification about whether or not all the records have produ been produced, and they've taken a position that not a single list of these records exists. So it's hard for us to discern from our position whether or not the documents have ever actually all been provided. They, they have said in court, in district court, that they have. Um, but uh, they have been produced with redactions, and it's our view that the, the failure to require the privilege law combined with the district court's sort of nebulous uh, order regarding, um, regarding redactions for things like descriptors of individuals and social media of individuals, it is our view that, uh, that, that there are still issues concerning what exactly what I was shocked to find out that they think we've gotten all the body cam and that the redactions were done correctly. I think it's very important that these letters get written so that the judges and the attorneys know what's going on. There is a list our community put together. Several of us worked on different parts of it. Sure. Yes. Is it your position that you have not received all of the body cam footage, leaving aside other documents and information. 
It's my position that I don't know, but that it's my understanding that Metro's Council has represented that we have, in fact, received all the body cam footage. However, there have been redactions. Right. And you We did not have all the 911 calls. We've got approximately 58% of them. We've got approximately 61% of the body cams. Not responded in court to the requests made beyond the records they initially received. Do you agree with that? We, uh, no, I don't agree with that because we did provide them with all the records. All the records in relation to 1 October have been produced. Well, and they McClatchy. have been provided to to the respondents. Well, Ms. McClatchy indicated during her argument that she received an initial set of records but had not received a response to her request after that. This is a list from the court documents of what we were supposed to get. It was court ordered. Some of these numbers are approximate, but what we've gotten doesn't even come close to what we were supposed to get. You can use this list. I'll order. ask her to clarify that, but it seems to me that if there's a, if there are open issues in this case about whether the redaction was appropriate, uh, if there are open issues in this case about whether or not records have been produced, if there are open issues in this case about the extent and appropriateness of the disclosure order, I don't understand why we're arguing about people's costs when none of those issues seem to be resolved. They seem to be open. This is a list of what we have received. LVSA and WEG put this together with some other people. These are the main things that we're missing. The judges are asking if they're missing, and Metro and the Review Journal are both saying that they think they got everything, and they did not. Absolutely did not. These numbers can be used in the letters that you write to the courts and the attorneys all. Justice, and I apologize. So the records, Metro has represented, they've produced all the records. However, the way that they produced the records were these sort of cattle call productions where you'd have to keep your eye out for these alert emails, uh, buy an unopened disc, drop it off at Metro at a certain time, and then go back and pick up your disc. But that was not a production to petitioners. That was an at-large open kind of cattle call process where we would rush to make sure that we complied with it so that we would get the records at the same time as everybody else. Could you address... Everybody, please write letters to these judges and attorneys. They're going to make a decision shortly, and they need to be informed that items are missing. We need everybody's help in the community, and we need to do this quickly. Thank you for watching. Please comment, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and have a great day.